Preheating or pre-cooling, whichever way you look at it, it's the secret to efficiency. So welcome back my fellow to begin. Today we're taking a look here at preheating and pre-cooling different elements that are running into this heat exchanger inside of our sour gas boiler. The system has come a long way. So we started off to just running the crude oil normally and then kind of processing that through an oil refinery. We then stepped it up by taking that crude oil, boiling it into petroleum, and that's where we got our net gain from that. And we explored other things like adding little critters and whatnot to reclaim things like carbon dioxide. At that point, we stepped it up to sour gas and saw a massive gain in power. And then we started to explore different efficiencies that I could build into this system back here, such as putting some of that heat energy into the natural gas generators over here so that we don't have to process all of the polluted water and then using steam turbines to recuperate a little bit of that energy and to temperature control that. We then eliminated some equipment and boom, here we are right now trying to improve the efficiency of this system. So let me show you what I've changed from the last time here. I've kind of rearranged some things based on your guys' comments over here uh, about where different things could potentially go and how things are preheating and pre-cooling. But before we take a look at how all of that is set up, let's take a look at it from a conceptual level here of what I'm trying to do. Ultimately, we're bringing in the crude oil from the oil well at around 80 degrees Celsius. So you have to go from there all the way up to 539 degrees Celsius. So if you have to make that big of a jump, it's going to take a lot of energy, which is why you see that my system currently has a lot of aqua tuners in it. So the key here is that if we can use some of this area where it's super hot and try to heat up the oil before it ever gets into the spot where, where the aqua tuners are, then we can drastically reduce the amount of energy it takes to put into the system in order to heat it up into sour gas. So on the first side of this, we have crude oil going all the way to sour gas. So that's pretty hot. On the back side of this, we have this super hot sour gas going way back down to methane and then jumping back up to natural gas. So there's a couple different ways that we can, you know, try to heat up this oil. One, we can try to use this sour gas here to simply try to heat up the crude oil all by itself. Or I could try to take the sour gas to heat up the liquid methane into natural gas, get that natural gas nice and hot, and use that to transfer between you know the natural gas and the crude oil. And whatever energy I don't use there, I can then dump that into the natural gas generators and then pull steam from there. And that's how I'm going to try to set up my machine today. All right, so now that we understand the concept, here's what's going on. So right down here, I've kind of reworked the liquid pumps. So rather than having all of these natural gas uh, pumps down here, you know, in the bottom and then using a heater to kind of heat up the methane and whatnot, I'm pumping this liquid here, all of that liquid methane up here to the top so that the coldest is right next to the hottest. So we get the super hot uh, sour gas right next to the liquid methane. So once this empties into this area up here, it's going to flash to natural gas. And at that point, that's going to then flow down into the gas pumps once it, you know, as it flows down. And, and this is working here to pre-cool all of that sour gas ever, you know, before it ever even gets to my heat exchanger down here, which is on the on the back side of the aqua tuner. Now, the way this thing's set up right now, it's only using one thermal aqua tuner. I just have a couple of gates set up for the temperature. So, so really I'm not using as many aqua tuners as you see up here. It's just, it allows me to play with the temperatures and see just how much we can, we can throw at this thing. So by trying to heat up this stuff right here using the sour gas, I'm reducing the amount of energy it takes to go from here, which is 500 and something, all the way down to methane. However, at this point, I'm going to have some really hot natural gas. If we take a look here, you can see that the natural gas that's flowing out happens to be at about 400 degrees Celsius right there. Look at that, that's 480. The cool thing about natural gas is that you can get it as hot as you want because it's not going to turn into anything different. They've yet to add plasmas to the game. It'd be really cool if they did. I don't know what we'd do with them. Make light bulbs? Clay? Off in the distance, some dev is just crying. So the next thing I'm working on here is how do I, you know, get this natural gas that's now nice and hot and dump its energy into the crude oil to bring, you know, to preheat all of that before it ever goes into here. And then once that's done, <laughs> yeah, we're going to heat exchange um, inside of this area over here so that we can dump all that heat into the steam and then reclaim that steam uh, energy via a steam turbine at the same time producing a minuscule amount of dirt but also clean water so that we don't have to 
pump out polluted water so we don't need to use the sieve. Whew. Simple, baby. Super simple. So if you're wondering what the liquid tepidizer is all about, it's just heating up this body of water, and that allows me to extract a little bit more energy out of the super coolant here so that it never reaches absolute zero. It seems like it takes more energy in than the energy I have to take out of this system right now in order to make it work. So I could end up at a point where the aqua tuner is just too cold to run. So this is what I'm currently working with right now. It'd be nice if I didn't have to have it there. This might also be a method of how to actually start up a, a system like this once we actually scale it down to something reasonable. So when we take a closer look at what's happening here, this system is generating right around 4,700 kilojoules or so. And it really has to do with just how much energy I'm able to put into the thing. So I could cool down the liquid more, run more aqua tuners, and also run more tepidizer to basically, <laughs> I'm going to call this the liquid tepidizer supercharger, to throw more power out of problem and get more power out of it, essentially. But that's not necessarily efficiency. What we want to do here is use the preheating of crude oil to turbocharge our sour gas engine. So I need that loop. How am I going to set that loop up here? So I've got something set up and it isn't really... I don't like it. All right, so here's what I've done. Let's see how it works. I've taken my crude oil and I'm letting it flow up on either side over here on the other side of this like wall. And the pipe here, you can see as this natural gas flows through it, you can see it gains up, a, it builds up a lot of temperature, all the way up to about 400 degrees, and then it's trying to deliver it over here into this area where we have crude oil. So radiant pipes are on top of radiant pipes inside of hydrogen. So you can see the crude oil here is now at 140 degrees Celsius. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is fun. Look at this height, look at this. Natural gas. So it comes in 500 degrees and then it drops down, drops down, drops down, drops down to like 200. Maybe gets below that and then starts to go right back up. Mm, makes sense, doesn't it? All right, I've taken it up to the next level. Snakes. Lots of snakes. Look at that. Mmm, 400 and some degrees. And then it's dropping down over there. Boom, just like that. Oops, I think we might be getting that a little bit too hot. See, that's the thing. The crude oil almost needs to keep moving. Otherwise, you see, we get heat damage way up here. That's not good. Although it is going in at like 300 and some degrees, which is pretty fancy. Just working on optimizing this down here. Let's, let's see what this does. Really want that to flash down. Come on now. Mmm, that does seem to be a little bit better. Look at that. See just how consistently this left side is pumping compared to the right. One improvement at a time. Mmm, yeah, baby. Run! Give me all your power! This, I think, might have just worked out perfectly. Check this out. Okay, so I've got the two-wile tile, two-tile wide thingamabob down here, right? So we got the metal tile, the metal tile. All of this liquid's just flying through. Boom! So there we go. I have all of this liquid methane. It is hooked up to a hydro sensor now, so it's a little bit more efficient. And then the methane should flow up. Whatever. I'll get rid of that. Boom. Methane flows up here, turns into natural gas. You can see that flow. Beautiful. Running right down. And that is working to pre-cool all of the sour gas, which is there's, there's an enormous amount of it up there. Going from 500 degrees, and by the time it gets down here... Look at that, 176. So not bad, not bad. The crude oil that's flowing out of this tends to be right around 300 degrees. Anywhere from 250 to 300. Kind of depends on what spot you're looking at. There's 300, and there's a 243. So that's really helping reduce the amount of uh, heat I have to put into it. I've pretty much disabled three aqua tuners here, so I just bypassed one. Uh, and if it gets cold enough, then I kick it out early. So, just two aqua tuners up here. For the most part, running... Eh, not all the time, but pretty close. So there we have it. Let's see how this thing runs and see what kind of numbers I get out of it. Oh, and by the way, the steam turbines are running as well. So, good deal. Alright, so I've had this thing running in the background while I've edited the first part of this video. And I think we're going to get some nice good results. But before then, let me pay my food tax here and tell you about this sweet bundle where you can get this exact same software that I'm using here to make this video and the last 1,300 videos I've made on this channel. The Sony Vegas bundle from Humble Bundle is a legit good deal. I've used FastCut here yesterday. That was actually pretty interesting. Once you figure out how to feed it the right stuff, it's pretty dope. 
I've used Movie Studio for a long, long time, and that's really all you need. But the Sony Vegas Pro lets you add in third-party software in order to automate a lot of the real clicky stuff if you're really into this. The best part about the Sony Vegas software over the Adobe stuff is that it doesn't have a monthly subscription, which is why I like it. Not only that, the workflow when you combine it with OBS is super fast. You just take your clip, you can drag it right in there, and boom, all your tracks drop in. Oh, so beautiful. If you use the link in the description below, not only will you help these great charities, but you'll also help support my channel as well. So thank you guys so much for your support and your continued patience with me as I, I really try to get this YouTube thing off the ground for me. All right, so let's take a look at these reports here. So in the last cycle or so, we generated, look at this, about 11,000 kilojoules, which is fairly normal for what we've done overall. Uh, maybe just a little bit lower than usual. It kind of depends on what numbers I pick here and there. But the key thing here is net, because this is all about efficiency. We want to use less power so that we get more power out at the very end. So let's remember back where we were. We started off with a system that um, was in one room, and then we pumped it to another room and all of that fun stuff. And that resulted in 63% yeah, of the power coming out of the system, but 37 of it being consumed in the process of making it. In the last video, by removing all of those pumps, we dropped that down to 68 and 32. So not bad. Now, when we apply preheating and pre-cooling to this, check this out. Mmm, 82 and 18. Boom! We are using less than 2,000 kilojoules in order to heat this stuff up. The average right there was right around uh, nearly 11,000. So we, on average, get about 9,000 kilojoules out of this thing. But we're only using up about 2,000 to make it happen. So if we look back here, we used 4,728 kilojoules in that original system that was working with sour gas just to run the thing. But now we're using 2,000. So that right there is a massive improvement. This thing is pretty stinking efficient. All right, let's take one last look here at how this thing is running as efficiently as it is. So up top here, we are running numbers that are a little bit higher. See, that's up to 595. And we saw the steam turbines turn on every once in a while just to kind of throttle uh, these aqua tuners back down. That is a source of inefficiency on a forge. But the other thing is I'm balancing this whole thing out with an Atmo sensor down here. So that's kind of throttling just how much sour gas I have up top here. Once I figure out the sweet number for the sour gas, then it'll be sweet and sour and it'll be absolutely delicious and super efficient. But I don't quite know that number just yet. A lot of the heat exchange is all happening here because of the natural gas and pumping this liquid methane right up here to the top. So you can see that the liquid vent um, drops down to a very low temperature, almost zero degrees Celsius at some points. And then it goes back up and goes back up. So the temperature of this metal tile right here is about 175. And then the sour gas above that is right around 400 degrees Celsius. So just to take a look at the liquid here, you can see that the methane rolls up, goes right up there. And then that's where all the cold stuff happens. So by the time we go from liquid methane to natural gas down here, we've dropped the overall temperature of sour gas from 550 degrees down to about 160 by the time it gets to the heat exchanger down here at the bottom. So that's where that huge amount of energy savings is happening uh, with the aqua tuners. I'm also running these pumps on a hydro sensor down here. So if it ever goes above two kilograms, then I'll pump that liquid up. I don't have any problems with solids, uh, but then again, I'm not using any radiant pipes here or I would have problems with solids. So now that I've heated up this natural gas, it now flows over here and runs on the same tiles as where I have the, the crude oil that flows up and into, into this exchanger up here. One strategy might be to actually exit the natural gas out at a lower spot because it hits about 450 degrees Celsius up here. So if I were to bring it out down here, then the maximum temperature it might ever be is right around 370. So that could potentially save it. As it stands, I'm using a couple of thermal sensors right here, just in case things get a little too hot, then I'm gonna force that crude oil into this chamber. But the second benefit that we're getting here is that the crude oil, by the time it's making its way into this chamber up top, instead of coming in at around 80 degrees Celsius, it's now coming in right around 300 degrees Celsius. So you can see that right there, that's 327 degrees. So the first savings is with the sour gas, the second savings is with the crude oil, and then the third savings that we're actually getting back here, although it is a fair bit smaller, is that we're using this uh, natural gas at about 130 degrees Celsius to add to the heat that's already over here in the natural gas generator room. 
So I'm getting a little bit back out of these steam turbines. You can see that they're not really generating a whole lot, anywhere from 90 watts to 150 watts, because they can only run at about 130 degrees Celsius. That's using the same sequence I did in my last video, which you can check out over there as far as how that runs. But some liquid gets recycled to cool the temperature and then at a certain temperature, it'll actually just flow out and then go right back into the oil well down here to run again. There we have it, yet another efficient step in the pursuit of unlimited free energy. For those of you looking for screenshots and blueprints of how to set this thing up, I'm going to have a link for that in the description below. I don't think this is necessarily going to be the system you want to build inside your base because I still want to miniaturize it, make it more practical, and at the same time also make it a whole lot bigger because while 11,000 kilojoules is great, 100,000 kilojoules would be a, like 10 times better. So if this looks like the channel for you, maybe considering that subscribe button. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. See you again next time. Peace. Brothgar, out.